David Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, I want to ask you, are you in a location that would allow you to prosper personally and professionally? And the reason why you want to ask yourself that is because you can spend time in your life doing something and the environment may not be the best environment. It may not be the most conducive environment for you to get the success that you desire. And you may figure that out later. Or you could be in an environment to where you're going to try to make it work because that may be where you want to stay. But in reality, you could have maybe had a lot more success somewhere else. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about two different cities that I lived in or currently live in at the particular time. But it's really designed to getting you to examine, are you in the right location that would allow you to prosper personally or professionally? So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Now, really quickly, in talking about you prospering personally and professionally, what I'm going to do is give you a, a, a brief promo of an event that I'm going to be having on April 27, 2024. And the goal of this particular event is to put you in a position to where you can prosper personally or professionally because of some of the changes that are going to be happening in our environment and also our economy. We're going to have a speaker at this event talk about debt, how to solve your debt issues. We're going to have another speaker at this event talk about how to put yourself in a position to be successful professionally and also personally based on this AI revolution. And then I'm going to be talking about how to utilize leap options to outperform the market. So kind of how to use the market to beat the market. The reason why you want to come to this event is because it may be the last time I can assemble these two speakers at this particular price point. And then also third, it will be the last time that I talk about leap options and instruct on it at this price point. The next time I do it, the price point is going to be way, way, way higher because of the value of the information that's going to be presented to you. So that's something I want to kind of remind you of. Every time I roll something out initially, I always roll it out at the lowest price it's going to be. Then over time, I continue to bring the price up as I continue to add more value to the situation. So let me give you a brief promo for that, and then we're going to go into the rest of the content. Over the next five years, radical changes will take place in the economy that will impact the world forever. These changes are the AI revolution, economic turmoil, illegal immigration displacing American workers. Average American will take a bad deal because of these changes. You don't have to take a bad deal. You just have to make the right decision today. Get some skills or take the deal 2024 event will take place in Atlanta, Georgia on April 27th, 2024. This event will only seat 40 people who are serious about learning how to prepare themselves for the upcoming changes in our society. You now have to make a decision. Take whatever deal they offer you or go to GetSomeSkills2024.com. Buy a ticket and attend Get Some Skills or take the deal 2024. Okay, so let's get right back to it. So the question I want to ask yourself is, are you in a location that would allow you to prosper personally and professionally? And next question you want to ask yourself is, what do you have to do to get to the right location on the map? If you believe that I'm living in the wrong city, or I'm even if I'm living in the wrong state, what do I need to do to get myself to the right location on the map? And this is really, really important because I look back now at my life and realize that I spent too much time in a particular location. And what I should have done was been a lot more aggressive about finding new environments to be successful in. I kind of got into a routine. I kind of got kind of comfortable and I stayed in particular environments, even though where I was trying to go, those environments could no longer serve me. And one of the reasons why we may do that is because we're comfortable and we're used to it. You know, you can live somewhere for an extended period of time and you kind of start to understand how that particular environment works. And there's a comfort level because often when you move to a new environment, what do you have to do? You got to relearn everything. You got to meet new people. You got to get around new situations to understand how that environment works. And it can take you a long period of time. And that can be one of the reasons why we're hesitant to just go to a new environment, especially if we're not used to it. Maybe how we were raised or how we grew up is because of that comfort level of I know everything around me. I kind of know how it works. I'm comfortable and I don't want to move. And that's something that impacted me to where looking back. I should have been a lot more aggressive about moving and not just visiting, but moving and staying in new environments a lot earlier, as opposed to just becoming very, very comfortable where I was at. And that's really was my issue is I had lived in a certain place for so long. I knew how everything worked. I knew how to make things come to me. And I got very comfortable like that until I realized that it was really putting a ceiling on my growth. 
So what, what I'm going to talk about is the city of Orlando, right? I'm going to kind of do a compare and contrast between Orlando and another city. And I'm going to get you to kind of look at your city that you're currently living in and maybe a city that you want to move to. And this is an easy way in which you can kind of do a compare and contrast of pros and cons to kind of understand what environment that you want to live in. I currently live in the metro Atlanta area, but I was raised in Orlando, even though I wasn't born there. I was born in another city in Florida. Moved from Orlando to another city in Florida and then moved from that city to the city of Atlanta. Right. Then moved from Atlanta to Houston, then moved back to Atlanta. I realized that I should have been a lot more aggressive about getting out of the state of Florida a lot earlier. But again, there was a comfort level there. Right. And Florida can make you very comfortable to where you're very hesitant to move because you feel like, well, I'm never going to be as comfortable as I am here. But you can't often make the city do what you want it to do. If the city doesn't have certain things in place that are going to allow you to be successful, you may have to go to those places and find out where that's at. Right. I knew a guy that was working in Lakeland, Florida. He was making a certain amount of money. And because the amount of money that was in that market, he never would make more than that. What he had to do was move to Nevada. And because the market in Nevada was so much bigger than what for what he does, he made way, way, way more money. That can happen. There was no way he was going to make those people in Lakeland pay him what he felt like he was worth because the money wasn't in that market. He had to go to a totally different market to finally get the money he felt like he deserved. You may have to do that. So here's some of the advantages of living in Orlando, right? Great weather, and I believe it, it brings about improved health. And what I mean by that is that, in my opinion, sunshine and good sunny weather is a benefit to your health, right? So I just visited Orlando earlier this week. I was there Monday. I was there Tuesday. The weather was beautiful. It was very warm, 85 degrees. It rained some um, Wednesday. It was a little chilly Thursday compared to how it was Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so Orlando, you come out of your house within maybe 30 minutes, you probably got 15, 20,000 IUs of vitamin D just that fast, just by you being outside. The sun is that intense there. The weather's that warm. It has a lot of health benefits, in my opinion. I really believe that, especially people that have darker skin, they benefit more from sunlight because they need more vitamin D. They need more exposure to sunlight to raise their vitamin D levels in fair skin people, right? And we have a lot of darker skin and brown skin people living north of, I would say, the Mason Dixie line. And you got to wonder if their vitamin D levels are really, really optimized, right? So that's something that I think a lot of people are not aware of. If you're a young person in the state of Florida, because of you playing outside, you're getting a large amount of exposure to vitamin D. We understand the health benefits of vitamin D. You get it naturally from the sun. And so when you're comparing against people from other parts of the country, they haven't had that same years and years of exposure to sunlight that you've had, which to me gives you some advantages in certain areas, right? That a lot of people may not be aware of, right? Other ethnicities can survive with lower levels of vitamin D because they have fairer skin, so they need less exposure. The darker your skin is, the more exposure you need to get the levels of vitamin D that are going to be sufficient to maintain your health. OK, so to me, that's one of the benefits of living in Orlando is you get a massive exposure to vitamin D. So I factor that into whether or not I want to stay there. Right. You have an effective road system. Um, Orlando has straight roads. What I mean, straight roads, the roads run north, south, east, west. You don't have a lot of curved roads. Right. And so me coming out of Florida and then going to other parts of the country, the roadways to me aren't really effective. Because with Orlando, once you understand what the arterial roads are and the connectors, it's impossible to get lost. Because even if you get off track, you just got to drive north, you're going to run right into either connector or an arterial road because you understand how the road system is set up. So the, the road system is very, very effective, and that's easy to do because of the geography. Florida is very flat. There is no elevation, right? Orlando is not even 100 feet above sea level. So it's easy to build straight roads because you don't have to worry about elevation. I got ties to the area. So because I was raised there, I still have a lot of family that lives in the area. So just in case something comes up, I got people that are around me to help me out. And that's a benefit of living in a particular area where you got ties. Many people are living in an area with no ties to the area. It can be difficult if something happens because you can feel like you're all by yourself. I understand how the game is played in the city. Because I'm from the city, I actually was involved I wasn't the type of person to just sit in the house and sit on the internet and type. I wasn't one of the people that just sat in the house to play video games all day. I know how the city actually works. I've moved around the city. 
I know how the city moves, right? There's nothing that's going to happen in Orlando that's going to surprise me, right? Same way with a lot of other cities in Florida, but Orlando, there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to take me by surprise because I know what the goals of the city are. I know what people and the, the administration and the government want to do in the city. I know how to police conduct themselves. I know how the city moves, right? So that benefit of living there is I know exactly what people are going to do. I know how they're going to perceive certain things because I know what the goal of the city is. I know what the major economy is, yada, yada, yada. And if you're living in the city and you don't know how the game is played, it can be difficult for you to be successful because you got to kind of know what this city is trying to accomplish. What are they really trying to do? So let me tell you a quick story. When I was real, real young, Orlando had a really, really big, what we call rave scene. Some of y'all may not know what rave music is. It's just a form of electronic music. They just reinvent the name of electronic music like every five years. Orlando might've had the biggest rave scene definitely on the Northeast. I'm sorry, bet definitely on the East Coast, but maybe in the whole United States, right? However, the people that were running the city combined with Disney did not want Orlando to get a narrative as a rave city because they associate that with a lot of drug taking. Back then it was a drug called ecstasy. Y'all might not know what that is. Now y'all call it Molly, but it's really called ecstasy. People that really was involved know before that it was called the Elvis, right? So because they didn't want to get that narrative put around the city, they got together and they made it to where the clubs had to close before a certain time. So you couldn't run a rave because the raves ran to like six in the morning. By putting out that ordinance that you had to close the club at a certain time that killed the rave scene. Right. Well, that's because that's how the game is played in Orlando. The tourism money is so great. They're not going to let anybody threaten that. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. As long as it don't threaten the tourism dollars, you cool. Once you start to threaten the tourism dollars, it's going to shut you down, right? So you got to understand how the game is played in the city. And most people live in cities. And if you ask them, like, what's the major economy in your city? They can't even tell you. They just know they wake up, go to work, go home, and they watch television or they play on the internet. Then they go to sleep, they wake up, they do that all over again. It's very difficult to navigate a city successfully if you don't really understand the game that's being played in the city. How does the city actually make money? What is the goals of the people that are in politics of the city? What are they trying to accomplish? Right. Is the city in the growth stage or is the city going down? Right. So you got to kind of understand what the goals are of the city. So me being from Orlando and me being involved, I knew what the goals were. Cost of living. Not as much anymore, but still compared to Miami or Atlanta, the cost of living is cheaper. Real estate is high, but the cost of living is cheaper because the salaries in Orlando are really not that great. So the cost of living is a lot cheaper. Right. Used to be way, way cheaper before the pandemic. Like the money I make now in Atlanta, if I was living in Orlando and the real estate market was what it was pre pandemic, I would be doing a lot better. Right. And I'm not doing bad, but I would be doing a lot better because the cost of living was so cheap. Orlando for a long time. And if you could make 50, 60,000 a year as a single person, you were doing very well for yourself because the houses were so cheap, the, the wages were so low, you didn't need to make a lot of money to really do well. It's different now because everything has gone up. Insurance has gone up, everything. But it used to be like that. But it's still not as bad, in my opinion, as Miami, definitely, and not as bad as Atlanta. It's nowhere near as bad as them. It's really difficult to live in those cities and not make a certain amount of money. You're close to the beaches and you're close to the nature parks. That's something I really, really enjoy. Orlando, you may be an hour 15, hour 30 from the East Coast beaches, right? There's nature parks all around the city. For me, that's into that type of stuff. That's a benefit. You go to other parts of the country, you don't necessarily have that. And if you do, it's very seasonal. Like you can do it three months out the year. In Orlando, you can go to the beach nine months out of the year, right? The water might be a little too cold if you're from Florida, but if you're from Canada, you go to the beach anytime you land in Orlando, you're willing to go to the beach. You're from New York or Jersey, anytime you come to Orlando, you're willing to go to the beach because 50 degree water is really not that cold to you. But if you are from there, you can go to the beach as nine months out of the year. You may be an hour and a half away from the beach. Right. Nature parks all over. So if you want to do something outside. You have that benefit. And one thing is. Different us in Orlando than a lot of other cities is we're outside all the time. Right. And that's that's even from other people in Florida. I used to live in Tampa. Orlando's the most outside city I've ever seen. We're out of the house all the time. 
right? And that's something that a lot of people that move from other places are not really used to. Um, we're just out all the time. We're at the park. We're at an event. We're at a festival. We're just always moving around. That's how we're kind of trained as young people. And we just keep it up as we get older. So we're always going out and doing something. It doesn't necessarily mean we're out spending money. We're just out of the house. Even when it's really, really hot, we're in when it's hot. As soon as it cools down, we come out. So you may in Orlando in the summer, you go to a park like six, seven, eight o'clock at night and it'd be a million people out there because it was so hot during the day. You couldn't really come out to the sun went down. Then everybody comes out, and especially on the weekends, because we know that most people work Monday through Friday. So on the weekends, they want to come outside and, and do things. So we're very, very active. And that's something that you have to get used to if you're not from the city. Next thing, we got real neighborhoods, right? So the actual city part of Orlando, where I'm from, I'm actually from the city limits, is based around neighborhoods. So if you look at it on a map, you'll see if you zoom in close enough how everything is broken down into a neighborhood. OK, it's not a city to where they built it by building a whole bunch of subdivisions or they built it with no real neighborhoods. Some of these newer cities, there's no neighborhoods in the city. It's just the city and that's it. Right. So, you know, I was raised in a neighborhood that existed before I was even born. You understand me? Orlando's full of neighborhoods and we identify by what neighborhood we're from. So I tell you I'm from West Orlando because I know you don't know what the neighborhood is. But if I'm talking to somebody from Orlando, I would tell them what neighborhood I'm from. That's how we identify. Then people can know what part of Orlando that you're from. And so that's a benefit because every neighborhood, it has an identity. It can have different type of architecture. You can see the difference based on where you're at in the city. Some neighborhoods in Orlando, their streets are uh, they're made out of brick. They're not regular like asphalt or concrete streets. Other neighborhoods in Orlando, the houses look different. So kind of based on where you're at, then there's also an ethnic, you know, a different ethnicity based on what neighborhood you're from. So it's really broken down in neighborhoods. Moving to another city, you don't always necessarily see those neighborhoods. And I was living um, like the Sugar Land slash Stafford area of Houston. There was a bunch of subdivisions, developments, but those weren't real neighborhoods. Because where I'm from, we don't put a wall around our neighborhood. You know, the geography is based on the area. It's not walled up. So when I moved to the Sugar Land, Stafford area, and I'm driving around and every subdivision got these walls, that's weird to me. Because I wasn't raised to where we put a wall around our neighborhood, but everybody does different kind of based on what part of the country that you're from. Right? That's one thing I do like about Atlanta is Atlanta still has their neighborhoods. So now let's talk about Atlanta, right? And let's talk about some of the benefits of living in that particular city. It's a large city. And so some people want to live in a bigger city because they was raised in a small city. I was raised in a, a city where I think the, the city is a few hundred thousand. Metro area is a little over a million. Most people don't even live in a city that has 200,000 people in it. Most people, a lot of people don't live in a city with 100,000 people in it. And that can kind of skew their point of view. And you kind of notice that, you know, you got people that make themselves really prominent on social media given their perspective and you got to, if you do the research on them, they're from a city of a hundred thousand people. So the college I went to was almost as big as their whole city. Right. So I went to a college that was almost as big as their city. So their perspective on life is different than mine because why they're from a very small area. Then they went to a college that was like smaller than HBCU. And they're on the internet giving their opinion on the world. They haven't seen any, any of the world because they're, they're from a, 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 a what we call a one-horse town, two-horse town. So that's just the way the world is. So there's benefits by living in a very large city because, one, you get more diversity. You can get exposed to more people, which means you get exposed to more points of view. So you don't have a very narrow way of looking at the world. You know, um, I don't want to get into politics. I don't want to get into that. But you don't have a very narrow way of looking at the world because you're from an area where there's a larger population of people and there's more diversity. So this attitude that diversity is, is negative, I mean, that works on people that are from cities of 20,000 people. But when you live in a city where there's a lot of people in the city, right, different types of people and not just different of ethnicity or different of uh, skin color, but different in, in perspective. Like I'm from West Orlando. I was raised around a lot of black people from the Caribbean. 
So I have a different point of view on certain things because I was raised around a lot of black people from the Caribbean. I don't have no issue with nobody from the West Indies because where I'm from, it's a respect thing. This internet is something different because nobody don't got to be responsible. If you in West Orlando and you trying to bang on people because of you from this island, they from America, that's not going to work out for you. It really won't. Like it'll go real bad for you. But on the internet, you can get away with that type of stuff. So I wasn't raised to have beef with somebody because they're from the islands. Right. Because I was raised around those type of people. It's Haitians. It's a lot of Haitians from my neighborhood. Right. But that's because I'm come from a larger city. Right. Where we have that kind of diversity, even though we all got the same skin color. Our culture is different based on what part of the world we're from. Right. Religion is different, too. I didn't meet any black Catholics till I started knowing Haitians. Because Haiti being a French colony formerly, there's a lot of Catholics there. Most black people don't know Catholics. Right. But most Haitians you're going to meet. Most of them are going to be Catholic if they practice a religion. You're going to get a few Pentecostals, which are going to be a lot of Haitian Catholics, especially in Florida. Right. Top 10 GDP of U.S. cities. This is something a lot of people don't talk about. Atlanta's GDP, I think last year was around 400. Right. So you got to realize that there's a lot of goods and services being produced in the city. And so that's something that you want to factor in. Can acidically economically support you based on what you're trying to do? Because if the money's not being produced in the city, it can be difficult for you to take the money out of the city. Now, it won't be impossible, but it can be difficult. I would prefer to be in a city that's flush full of money than to be in a city to where nobody has any money and I got to you know, beg and pull to get money out of people. Atlanta being a city to where it's top 10 GDP of all U.S. cities. So when the people is making these videos on Atlanta being this and Atlanta being that. They kind of tell it on themselves because they're not looking at the economic piece. The reason why people for years would come to Atlanta to get money is because there's money here. Right. You can't go to Bradenton in Florida to get money because there's not a lot of money there. Right. The money has to be in the city for you to take it out of the city. You feel me? So I'm in a city that's top 10 GDP or U.S. cities. It means that the city can support what I'm trying to do because there's enough liquidity and enough goods and services being produced in the city to support what I'm trying to do. So the little bit of money that I'm making ain't nothing. You know, and I tell people all the time, you got to understand the capacity of the market that you're in. Because if you're trying to pull money out of the market, the market has to allow you to do that because you can collapse the market. With the money that you pull out, it's impossible for me to collapse Atlanta. I mean, I could pull a million dollars a week out of Atlanta and it won't change nothing. Right? So you got to really understand that some cities, the money's so tight, it's going to be hard for you to get money out of the city. Major U.S. corporations based in the city. There's something, again, people talk about Atlanta. They don't talk about the corporations. They're kind of telling themselves and what they're involved in. We start talking about Home Depot, Chick-fil-A. Um, I forgot the name of these other companies. We know Coca-Cola. Is a lot of major corporations, Fortune 500 corporations, this is their headquarters, right? So they employ thousands of people, CNN, they employ thousands of people in this city. Those people are making revenue. They're going to spend money in the city. So you realize that there's a lot of money that you can make in the city because there's a lot of people in the city that make good money because of the major corporations in this city. Atlanta is also one of the centers for marketing firms. I used to be in AMA, which is American Marketing Association in the city. Atlanta for marketing firms, especially digital marketing firms, this might be the top place in the country. And I mean, we might even be bigger than New York and LA for marketing firms. So there's a lot of, a lot of corporate activity going on in the city that a lot of people are not aware of because they're, they're not careerists. They're not really about their career or they're so far on the economic scale it's not something that they're aware of. It's not a conversation that they have amongst their peers. So they don't even know in Atlanta the business footprint that's here. And so you got to realize is those corporations have to see something valuable about a city for them to make it to headquarters. Or they will pull up their footprint and go somewhere else. So that's why people are telling you everything bad about the city. It kind of has a lot to do with what they're involved in. Because how come they're not talking about I'm working for XYZ Fortune 500 company and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. That's never their conversation. It's always something different, which really speaks to what they're involved in. Um, ease of doing business as a business owner. That's one of the biggest reasons 
that drew me to this particular city, right? Because business is so prominent here and it's about doing business in this city. It's easy to do business here because it's not, I'm not like an alien, right? You go to other parts of the country and I'm trying to do business and people, they don't even have a point of reference of what, because they've never seen nobody that looks like me that's actually trying to do business. So I'm getting ready to do my second event in the city. Well, there's so many events in the city done by people that look like me. It's very normal for me to show up and be like, hey, I want to look at this event space. Oh, I need you to give me prices on yada, yada, yada. That's normal because there's so many people that, that came before me that look like me that have done events in the city. If I was to go to another environment and I show up and be like, hey, I'm trying to do one, two, three. They may be apprehensive because they're not used to somebody like me being about business. Right. And the people that talk to me and do it, me be tell you, like, I'm about doing business. Right. And so people have to be used to that. And because there's people that came before me. That have done business on a scale that's so much bigger than mine, they're not thrown off by the level of business that I'm trying to do. And so you got to really understand that is that you want to be in a place to where it's it ease of doing business as a business owner, where you're not trying to fight these people just to do business. I know for a fact, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, it wouldn't be as easy for me to do business in Orlando as it is for me to do business in Atlanta, based on the kind of business that I'm involved in. Now, if I just want to make money on the internet and sit in the house, it's different. But because I want to move to the physical side of it, I need an environment where they're comfortable doing that. Right? And so that's something that you want to talk about in Orlando. And I'm going to talk about in Miami also. They literally will cut you out of doing business in certain parts of the city. And these people can't fool me because I know because I know the city. I used to live in Miami. So you got YouTubers that are coming to Miami as a tourist. And they're moving as a tourist. So, of course, you're not going to have no issues because everybody knows you're a tourist. Right. If you're not from Florida and you're not from Miami, we immediately know about as soon as you open your mouth. You're a tourist. Right. So you're going to be treated as a tourist because we know you're a tourist. It doesn't mean you know the city. That works on other people that don't know the city. The average person is never going to go to Miami. Right. But if you go to Miami and you try to do certain types of business and you look a certain way, they're going to cut you out because that's just the, the game they're playing down there. They're not going to be really receptive to you, yada, yada, yada. So there's the ease of doing business as a business owner in a city that may not be available. It's close to Florida. So if I need to get back to Florida to deal with family, it's only like eight hours away drive. I just took a flight down there. The flight is like an hour, 15 minutes, right? It's real close. From Atlanta to Tampa is like a 45-minute flight. So if I got to get back to Florida for something, it's not an issue to where it's going to take a lot of planning. Like if, if somebody called me right now, like, man, you got to come to Florida right now. If I got to, I can get in my car and start driving. And I'll be there, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, but I get there. So that's what I want you to understand is that the proximity to where a lot of my family's at is a, is a benefit. Feel comfortable in the city, right? I don't feel out of place here, right? I don't feel like, and see, but it's also my personality. I never wanted to be the only black person in something. That's not really my branding. Some people, their branding is I'm the only black person in this environment. And that's cool if that's your branding, right? But that's not my branding. That's not something I feel comfortable. I'm from West Orlando. So because I'm from West Orlando, I'm used to being around a lot of black people. And it wasn't a negative experience for me. Some people, their experience around a lot of black people was negative. They internalize that. They haven't gone to therapy. So then they exhibit this apprehension to be to not being around a lot of black people. That's not my issue. So being in a city to where it's like 40 percent black is not an issue for me. So I'm very comfortable here because, like I said, I'm from West Orlando and I was raised around nothing but black folks. So there's a comfort level as opposed to me moving to a city. And as I'm moving around, I don't see any other black people in the city. I would be very uncomfortable. I wouldn't feel good if I'm the only black person here. That's not really my branding. That's really not what I'm into. Other people, that's what they're into. So that's what they're looking for. Right. So they'll move to some um, suburb, like way out in Seattle somewhere. And they're happy that they never see another black person, you know, because sometimes I think they want to be the special person. And I'm cool with that. But that's not really what I'm on. Right. So that's a, a comfort level that I have in the city. Right. 
a black business class in the city. That's really important to me. Orlando, to me, does not have a black business class. I've been to other cities. They don't have a black business class. If you're not involved in business, it won't be important to you. Right? If you're just, like I said, you're working a nine to five, you come home, you go inside your house, you close the door, you watch television on the internet till you got to go back to work the next day, it won't matter to you. However, the type of partnerships that I'm trying to build, the type of things that I'm trying to do, it was important that there was a black business class in the city because there's people I can sit down and speak business about and we have some commonality around what we're talking about and we may have similar goals. So we're trying to work about, hey, we want to develop this particular area. We want to talk about how we can improve this particular area. I can sit down and talk to them about that. And also, again, if I'm talking to other people, they're used to dealing with black business people. In the city of Atlanta, if you're a black person and you have a business, you're self-employed, people of all ethnicities are used to dealing with that. Where if you go to another city, they may not be used to them. So now you got to overcome their lack of exposure to you. Right? A lot of cities are going to continue to fail because there's no black business class in the city. There's Negroes that make money on a job, but there's no business class. And if you look at other ethnic groups, the way they compete in cities is with their business class. They don't compete with just people that just make money. No disrespect to my nine to five working people. Right. We need them. Because they're going to be the majority of the population that are going to buy goods and services. But other ethnic groups that are competitive, they compete with their business class. And so one of the things that we see is that there's that lack of black business class in a lot of different cities. And so you don't have that ethnic group that's competitive around anything because you don't have that business class that is saying, I need things to work a certain way because that's going to be the best benefit of our business. Right. So that's something that was really attractive to me about the city of Atlanta. OK. Now, let's go into some of the cons around Orlando. Let me go back to Orlando real quick. So major gentrification on the west side of the city. So just came out of there three, four days ago. Every time I go to Orlando, I'm seeing more Latinos on the west side. So they've run out of the area that the, the Anglos will let them move into on the east side. They've run out of areas on the south side, right? Um, Orlando has... The Orlando metro area, you go look this up. This ain't commentary. This is not my take. If I'm not mistaken, there are either three or four for Puerto Ricans outside of Puerto Rico and New York City. They're either third or four, right? There's an area in Orlando called Point Siena. It's south of the city of Orlando, but it's considered the metro area. Orlando metro is either third or four for Puerto Ricans outside of New York or... um. What is about getting ready to say? Puerto Rico. Sorry. Had a brain freeze. New York or Puerto Rico. Um, that may have changed. Last time I looked, that was the deal. So they're running out of areas to move into because they've essentially saturated these other areas. So now we're seeing a lot of Latinos on the west side. Okay. And so what you're seeing is major gentrification on the west side of the city. The Paramore District in Orlando is a historic black district in Orlando. They've worked very hard to move black people out of that area. They put the soccer stadium right downtown in that area, right? So what they're doing is they're trying to get all the black people out of the West Side. And they're going to do it because there's no business class in the city to try to stop it, right? So historically, what people did in Orlando was once they made a certain amount of money, they left the city. And they moved way out to the suburbs. So you never, the people never got replaced by other people. You know, it was a loss of that person. They moved way, way out. So what they're doing now is they're just gentrifying all the black people out of the West Side. Once they get all the black people out of the West Side, you're only now going to see black people in what we call this area called Pine Hills, which is in the county, but it's not the city. There's been black people in the city of Orlando since the 1800s. It's not going to be any black people in the city pretty much probably the next 10, 15 years. Right. And they've been doing this very slowly but surely since the 90s, just getting you out of there, getting you out of there. The city buying up land. The city buying a project. So there's an area in Atlanta called Orange Center Boulevard. When I was growing up, that whole strip was none but projects. The city bought that whole strip, got everybody out of there. They put mixed housing on one side. The other side, they just never developed it. Right. 
So they're slowly but surely getting people out. There was another area that was lower income called Griffith Park. They bought that area. They moved everybody out and they never replaced it. They just put it's just flat land. So what they're doing is they're getting all the black people out of the west side of the city. OK, so when you go there, you're noticing that there's less and less black people in the city that actually live in the city. Well, there was a time to where in Orlando, if you was on the west side or you was on the south side, you'd be surrounded by a number of black folks. Right. That's starting to become less and less. A lot of Brazilians on the west side, a lot of Venezuelans on the west side. They're coming up from Miami because Miami is too expensive. So they're going to continue to push everybody out because, again, there's no business class there to protect what we've gotten over the past 25, 30, 40, 50 years. Many people in Orlando don't speak English as a first language. They move it into the city. Right. So you're seeing more and more of that the way you're going and dealing with people in Orlando, they don't speak English as a first language. And that's something that you got to deal with. And they have no desire to speak English. They're cool speaking whatever language they were speaking where they came from. And it's just becoming that kind of city now. OK, whole sections of the city where people don't speak English as a first language. This been going on, but it's even more now. Right. So in certain parts of you go to the east side of the city and you don't speak Espanol, it's going to be hard for you to do anything. And it's, it's like that in Miami, too. If you get outside of the tourist areas, people actually know the city. So you're on the east side of the city, whole section where people don't speak English as a first language and they don't have a desire to. And you'll literally go into stores that are owned by corporations and you'll speak to people in there. They just speak Spanish to you. They don't even want to talk English. And so you got to realize like that's kind of where the city's going. OK. Real estate market is picked is picked over based on cost. A lot of the homes that are available to you in Orlando, in my opinion, they've been picked over. What they're asking for for the property is too expensive based on what you're getting. Right. So to really get something decent, you got to move out into the metro area. But actual city, there's not a lot available. Everybody has pretty much taken up all the real estate there. So either you got to buy a house that somebody already in, but any open house is not really worth what they're asking. So that's one of the downsides to where houses used to be very cheap inside the city. Now the value has really, really gone up. People that you think are special are very basic and they think they're not. Right. So. The people that y'all think are special because of how y'all been programmed and socialized by media and your exposure, in my opinion, they're very basic, right? But they don't think they're basic. But I know they're basic because growing up, you know, my people have family in Chicago. We have family in California. We have family in the DMV. So I traveled a lot as a young person, but I, even though I'm from Florida. So I got exposed to a lot of different types of people. The Orlando mentality for a lot of those people, they think they're somebody on a certain level, but they're really not, but they think that, and that's something that you got to deal with. They're very, very, very basic people, right? They haven't really been a lot, around a lot of stuff. They have a lot of really uh, basic exposure to the world, but they just think they're very, very special. And so that's something that you got to deal with when you're in Orlando to where you're trying to communicate with somebody and they got an attitude because they think they're special, but they're really not special, but they think they are because they've been socialized that they're special, right? Not easy to do business as a business owner. In Orlando, as a business owner, it would not be as easy to do business as it is in Orlando because most people don't have a point of reference of somebody that looks like me that's doing business. So they wouldn't even really know how to deal with me. No black business class in the city. That's one of the downsides of the city of Orlando. Everybody wanted to go to college to be a professional. There's nothing wrong with that. You need more professionals than anybody else, right? You need more working class people than anybody else, but they never build out a business class. Right. So then therefore, when things are taking place, there's no black business class. We're the only group that tries to lead with athletes, entertainers and clergy. You know, Negroes telling me I like this entertainer because they tell the truth. They never say that about a business person because they don't know any business people. Right. So that's the issue is that we it's very difficult to lead a group in America with entertainers, celebrities, social media commentators. You can't lead a group like that. Because you're in competition with business owners, right? They're not trying to get social media attention. They're not trying to get their next podcast appearance. They're doing business. And so they're meeting with the politics in the city about what's the best way for us to push this city business-wise. Not what's the next thing I can say on social media that's going to get me a lot of attention because that's my business. So you need a real-life 
off the internet business class as part of your group, right? Building more cookie cutter developments with no character. This is real big in Orlando now. Go to the Lake Nona area where they're doing a lot of development. Everything is like a box with no character. The houses are boxes. The, the buildings are boxes. No character in the city. And that's how they're building all the new developments out. Right? Everything's cookie cutter. Because it's cheap, it's easy, it's fast to build like that. Right? The way they built homes in the 50s, a lot of homes in Orlando actually inside the city were built like in the 40s and the 50s. They built homes differently back then. Took longer to build a house. They used different materials. Now, because of the materials that they use, the speed in which they need to build, and the way in which they do it, everything's cookie cutter. So when you're riding through a new development, like there's an area called Lake Nona that's on the southeast side of the city. When you're riding through Lake Nona, everything looks the same, right? Nothing looks different. Just different colors of the homes, but everything looks the same because everything's cookie cutter. So it's new. It's in a nice area, but it has no character to it. So some people don't mind living like that, right? Because they're just looking at the newness of it. But it's just very, very drab to me. And so that's something that you got to kind of really deal with. Downsides of living in Atlanta, right? Let me go through this real quick. Bad weather, bad health. To me, the weather here is terrible. Okay, Atlanta is, I want to say, a thousand feet above sea level. The air here is very, very dry. Right. And I know the difference because I'm from Florida. The air here is very, very dry. Uh, it messes with my sinuses a lot. I've had a lot of issues with sinus colds since I moved here. When I lived in Florida, I rarely ever got a sinus cold. The air here is very, very dry. In the winter, you go inside the house, you're running heat all day. That makes the air even drier. And that puts you in a, a position to get a sinus cold. It makes it relatively easy because your mucous membranes are very dry. The sun here is decent. It's not great. Um, it's colder than what I would want. With, like I say, we're about 1,000 feet above sea level. So to me, it there's implications from a health standpoint. Now, if you're coming from north of Atlanta, you think this place is great. It's not great to me because I'm from south of Atlanta. So I know what really nice weather feels like. The skies are gray a lot. Where I'm from in Orlando, you rarely have a gray sky. Right? Rarely. That means it's going to rain. It'll rain. The sun will come right back out. Here, the sky would be great five, six, seven, eight days in a row. That's just the environment that we live in. So you got to factor that in, right? That the weather here is not great and it can be negative to your health. If you're used to getting a lot of sunlight, if you're used to a lot of warm water, warm weather, you're not going to get that here. Just something that you got to deal with. You're going to have months where you're just going to run heat all day and all night and you're going to wake up and do it all over again. Where in Florida, Central Florida South, you may run heat two months out of the year, right? Bad roadways. Because of the geography of this particular area, most roads don't run north, south, east, west. They run in really random patterns, right? Because they wanted to build around the geography. What they should have done here is have the Army Corps engineers come here and just flatten the whole city out. But they didn't want to do that because they wanted to keep the trees and things of that nature. So I'm cool with that, right? So as a result, the roads here don't really run straight, right? And therefore, when you're trying to move around a city, you're trying to really deal with these really, really weird shaped roads because you got to build around the geography. Orlando, the terrain is very uneven and they built roads around that. So that's something that you got to get used to because from Florida, everything's flat. So you know if you're on the road going north, it's going to keep going north. In Atlanta, the road will go north and then it'll go east for like two miles. And then it'll turn west again for two miles and it'll go north again for another mile. Like it's real weird. And so you got to understand that just by driving around and looking at your map, kind of understanding how the roads are built here. And it's hills and all kind of stuff. You don't have those issues in Florida. Real estate market is very expensive, right? Average home here might be 350, 400,000 if it's not a fixer upper. And it's not going to get cheaper. They anticipate that they're going to add another. 1.8 million people in the metro area by 2050, right? So what you mean is that it's going to be even more demand on real estate over the next 20 years. It's not going to get less. It's going to get more. So what does that mean? How is it going to keep going up? There's no, so listen to me. I don't want to turn this into a real estate conversation, but people are being misled with disinformation around real estate. If Atlanta is going to add, let's say it does add another 
1.8 million over the next 20 years. Atlanta, if you know anybody that's really tapped into the city, there's a shortage of housing in the city. How does real estate get cheaper in that environment? So this is why I press on people to really understand supply and demand economics. Because if you understand supply and demand economics, they can't tell you this type of stuff and then you run with it, right? So if I'm living in Atlanta, I'm focused on getting a house now before the 1.8 million people show up. Because 2030 and later, it could get even worse for you. Now they're talking about the city annexing more land, but there is a shortage of housing in the city, right? That's not going to improve if we get another 1.8 million people by 2050. That won't improve, right? So you got to really understand that the demographics of the city plus the current housing doesn't speak to the housing market crashing in the city of Atlanta. Okay, let's keep going with it. Massive gentrification in Fulton County. Massive. If you think gentrification is bad in Orlando, you ain't seen nothing if you come to Fulton County. Fulton County wants everybody out that don't make 100 grand or more. If you don't make 100 grand or more, they don't want you in Fulton County. One of the reasons why is because why? There's a shortage of land. So they want people that are willing to pay prime money for land now. Used to be, you could be dead broke and live in South Fulton County. You could live in West End. You could live in uh, all the area around Oakland City, all the stuff around Atlanta, the, the Atlanta College, I think they call it the AUC. You could live around there and just be chilling. Mm -mm. All, that, all that land now is going to be considered very, very valuable. So they're going to make it in Fulton the way if you ain't making around 100000 you can't even stay inside the city. You're not going to be able to afford to stay here. You're not going to be able to rent an apartment and you're not going to be able to buy a home. So they're doing a massive gentrification because they know based on their own data that we're going to pull 1.8 million people in here by 2050. So we need to free up the area for those people. So what are we going to do? We're going to move our lower income people out. And they've been doing this. They got rid of the projects, got some of them out. But you still had the people that was living in the homes inside the city. Now what they're going to do, they let those areas essentially go turn into wastelands, right? Uh, what's the guy's name? The ex-mayor, the black dude. Um, it was a surplus in the budget. He could have had the city buy those homes and redo those homes and put them back on the market. He didn't want to do it because what he wanted to do, he wanted to keep lowering the value, make sure those neighborhoods was real bad so people didn't want to live there. So you have people in Atlanta that own homes, but live way out, but didn't remodel the home that they owned in the city because they felt like they couldn't get no money for it anyway. Then they sold it to a developer or a builder for cheap because they weren't making no money in the home anyway. And this was done purposely. So he let a lot of these areas, College Park, a lot of the areas around the Mercedes Benz, he let those things go down. Right? He let those things go down because they wanted to get that land real, real, real cheap. And that, it worked. They're gonna get, they've been getting that land cheap and they're going to keep getting that land cheap. You go to uh, that, go to Edgewood, they gentrified Edgewood. Used to be you go to Edgewood and you from over there, them people to kill you. Go to Edgewood, they gentrified Edgewood. They've Edgewood, they gentrified Kirkwood. They've gentrified um, off 20, coming off of, you know, 75, you take 20 going east, all that area around Moreland, Five Point. They gentrified all that going up the ponds. All that's been gentrified. They getting ready to gentrify South of 20 over there by Boulder Crest. You think nobody will live in Boulder Crest? Okay, wait. They coming for everything in South Fulton County and West part of DeKalb County. They're going to get it all. So you're seeing massive gentrification inside this city where if you don't make a certain amount of money, they don't want you living here. They're gentrifying Vine City. Used to be you couldn't give away property in Vine City. They gentrifying that. They're getting ready to gentrify the bluff. So all these areas that nobody wanted to live into, they're getting ready to gentrify. Or they're currently gentrifying it. You start looking at real estate in the bluff now, they want $300,000 for a house. That house that you buying for $300,000 now, wait about 10 years to be worth half a million. Because there's nowhere else for people to move, right? You go to the west side, take Atlanta down, it turns into Marietta. They're building nothing but townhomes and apartments on that side. They're asking for $450, 500 for a townhome. Somebody told me all the industrialization on the west side, they're getting ready to move that out to Union City. Right? They're going to make Union City be the industrial hub for the metro. Right? And so it's going to free up more land. 
because they're short on land in Fulton County. There's not enough land for what they're trying to do. So that's what's going to make the real estate keep going up. It's not going to get cheap. It's going to get more expensive. But let these people on YouTube tell you the real estate market's going to fall. That don't really add up. But, you know, it is what it is. Most people living in the metro have never lived in Fulton, or even close to Fulton. Right. I don't live in Fulton. I live five minutes away from Fulton County. I'm in Fulton County a lot, especially on the southwest side. I'll be in the southwest on a regular basis. Right. Understand something. A lot of these people that's making these YouTube videos about Atlanta, man, they live out of Alpharetta somewhere, man. They live like in Duluth. They live in Cartersville. They might live in Conyers. Hell, they might live in Lovejoy. They live in a LaGrange. They don't be in the city, bro. They just, they, they say they live in Atlanta. And I know that because I'm from Orlando. They're about to tell you they live in Orlando. They do not live in the city. They don't know nothing about the city at all. They live in Ocala. They live in Sanford and they tell you they live in Orlando because they know you don't know none of those other cities. So they're going to say, I live in Orlando. They from Sanford. Sanford's not Orlando. Sanford's his own city. So a lot of these people that you hear giving you commentary on Atlanta, they don't live in Fulton County. They don't even live close to Fulton County. It's not like they live in like in Sandy Springs, the southern part of Sandy Springs. They live in the southern part of Dunwoody. They live in the southern part of Roswell. I mean, these people live way out. They live in North Gwinnett. And they're making YouTube videos about Atlanta. They don't even be in the city like that. Right? Unless they go to a football game. So it it is skew your perspective on the city because most people didn't want to live in the city because the real nice parts was real expensive. They didn't want to live in the bad part. So they moved way, way out because it was cheap at that time. Right? And then they just came in every now and then to for an attraction or an event, whatever, SEC championship, whatever. But if you ask them, what part of Fulton County, hell, even what part of DeKalb County did you live in? They can't take it. They never lived there. They don't even know the zones out here. You know what I'm saying? They don't, so I know you ain't, you, you ain't really living in the city because they don't even know the zones. So that's the issue is that a lot of people are getting commentary from people that's not even in the city. The first thing I did when I started living in Atlanta I said, I got to find people from the city. Why? Because I got to know what's really going on. So that's one of the reasons why I linked with Huff. Huff is a Georgia native, he Atlanta native. He know the whole city backwards, forwards, and sideways. So that's how I really learned who's who in the city, how the city moved. I learned it from somebody that's from the city. I didn't learn it from no transplant that's living in Alpharetta somewhere. They just do YouTube videos about Atlanta. They can't tell me what I need to know because they're not really from the city. Right? I need to know from somebody that went to high school in the city. Right? So I can get the real deal on what the how it's really moving up here so I can know how I need to move. You feel me? So that's what I want you to understand. That's one of the downsides that a lot of people that you're going to speak to about the city, they live in a far out part of the metro. They never lived in Fulton and they didn't even live close to Fulton. They didn't live 10 minutes away, 20 minutes away from Fulton. Hell, they live an hour away from Fulton County. Right? And they only come in when there's time to do an event and they go right back out. Cost of living can be high. We talked about that. Cost of living going to keep going up. So that's just something you got to accept. It's not going to get cheaper to live here. Okay, it's not. The real estate market is not going to crash. And all of a sudden now, you're going to be able to live in Atlanta for $300 a month. It's not going to happen. And that's why you see a lot of people in the city quiet is kept, especially the women. They got hella roommates. Right? They don't want you to know that because they got their little social media appearance they're trying to keep up. But they got hella roommates because the cost of living, living here can be very expensive. Okay. So that's something that you got to understand. Are you living in a city where it's expensive to live? You're going to start seeing Houston cost of living start to creep up as more and more people move there. It ain't going to be the, the place to move there with no money no more. Because if everybody keeps moving to Houston, it's going to put so much demand on property. It's going to put so much demand on services. And they're not moving to Houston because they make a quarter million dollars. A lot of moving to Houston, they're making 30, 40,000 a year. So they already under an economic strain. Then they move into a city that there's a lot of money in the city. It's just spread out. As more and more people move there, it's not going to be as spread out anymore. And you're going to see that cost of living start to creep up and they're going to have to get up out of Houston. I don't know where they're going to go next. They probably end up going to Mississippi somewhere. You got to stay focused on making money all the time. If you're living in Atlanta, you got to stay focused on getting paper. If not, you, you're going to fall out of step. And I don't think a lot of people realize that because again, you're buying into a narrative from people that really don't live in the city. Right. If you want to live in the city, you got to be focused on getting paper. 
right? LA the same way, New York the same way, Miami the same way. When I live in Orlando, you ain't got to be focused on making, in fact, most people in Orlando not focused on making money. That's why I do events here because I don't think it would make sense to try to build a footprint in, in Orlando because a lot of people in Orlando not really focused on making money. I know because I was trying to get money in Orlando. Most people, weren't, they was just trying to party. Orlando's a city where you're just trying to get to the weekend so you can party. Then Monday, you start all over again. Atlanta, because the cost of living is so high, you got to be focused on getting you some money or else you're going to fall out of step. Again, that's why a lot of these chicks that y'all think is big, they living with other people because they got to team up to pay them bills because you got to make money your focus. And so if you know that's not really what you want to focus on, you got to ask yourself, do I want to live in a city where you got to focus like that just to maintain yourself? Because New York's like that. LA's like that. Chicago somewhat like that. Miami definitely like that. If you're going to live in Miami and you don't want to live in the ghetto, you got to get paper. Money got to be on your mind all the time. Like they say, money got to be a major issue. It has to be, or else you're going to fall out of step and you're going to find yourself behind the eight ball because you're going to be broke. Not close to decent beaches. That's the issue for me. If you never live close to a beach, you wouldn't know the difference anyway. Right? To me, Atlanta's a downgrade because it's hours away from Savannah and it's hours away from the Gulf beaches in Alabama. It's a downgrade to me, but it's something I got to do right now. But to me, one of the biggest premiums and the benefits of living in Central Florida, living in Miami, living in Tampa, Clearwater, is it's 616 right now. If I was living in Tampa right now, it's 616. I could call somebody. I say, man, let's go to the beach and we can be at the beach by seven o'clock. Or tomorrow, Sunday, I could call somebody in the morning and say, let's go to the beach. And by 12, one o'clock, we could be on the beach. It's too easy to live like that. Like it's just a benefit that you got because you're from a state was surrounded by water on three sides. Right. So that's the downside. But to me, it's a downside because I'm used to it. If you're not used to it, then you're not going to see the difference. Right. So that to me is not being able to go to the beach when you want to. That's a negative. Increasing number of people don't speak English as the first language in the metro area. So I live in Cobb. West Cobb is being filled with Mexicans. I don't have nothing against them because they're Mexican, right? I'm not against them because of that. But what you're seeing is that they're filling this area up with people that don't speak English and don't have a desire to speak English. There's, uh, so if you take, I think it's Cobb Parkway or either South Cobb, one of the two. You take it north to Pat Mayo Road. There's a shopping center. It's like a mall on Pat Mayo with Pat Mayo and Cobb, I think it's Cobb Parkway intersect, either Cobb Parkway or South Cobb. That whole shopping center full of number of Mexicans. You go up in there right now, they won't speak English to you. They don't took that shopping center over. They don't ran the red next up out of there. They don't took that thing over. Mexicans, they 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 got Pat Mail Road locked down. Don't nothing move on Pat Mail Road if they ain't got their hands in it. Right? Because they territorial like that. That's how they move. Right? And again, they they left Mexico because they had problems with other Mexicans. When they come to America, what do they do? They get with some other Mexicans. You, you won't find no YouTube video no Mexican talking about Mexican culture is flawed. Mexican culture is negative. But that's the reason why you had to leave Mexico, though, because of Mexicans. See, then they get over here, they get with some more Mexicans, and they try to figure out what group can we compete with that don't have no organization about themselves. Well, it's easy to find us because we're in Georgia. Right? So they know how to make sure that they're successful because they get with their folks and they build whole areas to well. If you ain't on their time, you ain't going to do no business. And so they got Pat Mail Road on lock. You can't do And it's in Cobb County. And ain't nobody going to do nothing about it. And if you go out there, you got to make sure you come correct because you're going to be surrounded real fast up there. Uh, at this point in my life, so we transitioning. My focus is on business, making money and relationships. I need to be in a city that supports that goal. So if the city don't support those goals, I ain't trying to be there. Right? So I don't want to retire in Atlanta because it's too cold. It's just too cold to want to retire here. I want to retire someplace where it's warm. But at this stage of my life, I'm focused on business, making money, relationships. So that's what I'm going to do here. Then when I move to another stage of my life, I can go to another city to do something different. But the question you want to ask yourself is what are your goals for the next 10 to 20 years? Like, what are you really trying to do? Do you have any goals? Right? Are you just doing Monday through Friday, party on the weekend, start over again on Monday? 
And I know because I've been there. Right. I've been there to where my, my goal was just let me get to the next day. Yada, yada, yada. Let me get to the next party. Yada, yada. Because Orlando, one thing about Orlando, we got hella parties. You're going to never run out of like stuff to do. Right. People come to Orlando be like, man, it's slow. It's because you ain't tapped in. Because I could tap you in the way you you'll be trying to you'll be trying to get out of stuff. I tap you in so deep. Like it's a it's a, so much stuff to do in Orlando. It's crazy. But you got to be tapped into the right people. And you can't be scared to be in the neighborhoods. It's not all about being at a, a club or an event. It's stuff happening in the neighborhoods because we like that. But if your goal is only to do that, you'll look up 10 to 20 years later and you'll get nothing done in your life. Right. So that's the question you want to kind of ask yourself. What are your goals in the next 10 to 20 years? Can you actually verbalize what those goals are, put them down on paper? Then the question is, how can the city you live in support those goals? Because if the city can't support those goals, how are you going to get to them? Because you you may not have the ability to make the city move the way you want it to move. So then what city do you need to live in to support those goals? You may have to move to a city to where the real estate is really, really cheap for you to get a house. That may just be what you need to do. Because staying in a city where the real estate is going to be so expensive that you're never going to be able to afford anything can impact your family's ability to build wealth. So maybe you need to move way out to a city where you can afford something. You know, I know people that used to live in Huntsville. They told me Huntsville, man, it was cheap. Right? So maybe Huntsville, maybe Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, I forgot the, the, the Tennessee city north of Atlanta. Maybe you need to move there. Maybe you need to move to Gaston. I was looking at land in Gaston. I wish I would have thought about that in 2000. I would probably own something out there already. Maybe you need to move to Gastonia. You got to ask yourself, like, what city do I need to move in that's going to support my goals? Because you it's off, it's, you may not be able to make that city do what you want it to do because you're not in that position. And you can miss out hoping that the city moves a certain type of way. All these people that's waiting for the real estate market, the crash and to buy a home, I really believe in five years, they're still going to be waiting. And the real estate is going to be more expensive. Right? So what I want you to understand is that really think about what your goals are because I have, and I think that could be beneficial to you. And don't be scared or be apprehensive about moving to a new environment and just having to meet brand new people. It can take time. Um, but if it works out for you, it can be beneficial to you. I moved to Houston. I just didn't like the vibe of Houston. I couldn't do it. Right. I just couldn't do it. Um, I'm not really the way the Southwest works. Don't really work for me. None against the city. A lot of money in the city. People doing real well. It just didn't work for me. So I moved back, but I wasn't scared to move out there to just see what it was like, because I never would have known. I would have been always in the back of my head thinking, well, I guess I think Houston's better. It really wasn't better for me. Right. But it's going to work for a lot of people. Because there's so many people out in Houston doing well and they like the vibe of it, yada, 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 but it just didn't work for me. But I wasn't scared to move out there and see what time it was on. A lot of cities I can't move to because they're too cold. I don't like cold weather. Right? So it just won't work for me. I don't care how much money they got up there. I'll be so miserable because of the cold. I just, it won't work for me. So I got to make sure, how can I make the cities that I can actually live in and function in and make those work for me? as opposed to moving somewhere and it won't work for me. For me to move somewhere, it's cold. The money got to be so great. You know, they'll be proud to pay me $10 million a year because I don't like being cold. I don't know how people, when they walk out their house, they got to put on a jacket, a coat, a scully on their head, something on their mouth, earmuffs, boots, all that just to come out the house. Like, that's too much. Then you come back in, you got to take all them clothes back off again. I'll never leave the house. Cause I'm not doing all that just to move around. Cause I'm used to just grab my keys and leaving. Right. Cause even in Orlando, when it rained, all you do is grab an umbrella. You know what I'm saying? So I can't live like that, but other people can. So I, if it worked for them, it worked for them. But like I say, that's what they used to. That's not for me. So that's pretty much all we're going to talk about. If anybody got any disagreements, any comments, any questions, we're going to put the link up in the chat. Let me see. Let me paste that real quick. Okay, so that's pinned. We're going to read these super chats and we're going to get up on out of here. So Terrence, man, I appreciate the 999 super chat. 
Lillian Lawrence, appreciate the 199 champ. I appreciate the $10, man. Appreciate it. The real Dana, appreciate the twenty dollars super chat. Check out the real Dana channel. She does really, really good videos on the political side with her and Judge Joe Brown. They also got stuff on the website. Check them out. Support independent black political media. Somebody that don't have somebody's hand in their back telling them what to say. Support these people so they can continue to do what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? That's really, really important. Right? We need people like that. They don't have nobody telling them you can't talk about this or else we're going to take you off the platform. Right? Big up to Girls of Pearls. Appreciate the $10. Big up to Miss Tam. Appreciate the $199. Uh, big up to Ori, man. Appreciate the $499 Super Chat. So like I say, we got the link posted. Anybody want to come through, let me know. I'm going to read these comments. What's going on, Miss Alexander out in San Antonio, Texas? So I heard that the real estate in San Antonio is very, very reasonable. Right? So I maybe should have thought about that before I left Houston because I heard that the real estate there is very reasonable. You know, so that's a benefit of San Antonio. And they building up out there, too. I really think they're going to get an NFL team eventually. And I think once they get that NFL team, I think that real estate going to start moving up. So, Miss Phoenix, what's going on? So, Fourth Dimension says you live in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You got 30K in debt, struggling to find a job, that enough to pay it. So I would ask you, where are you willing to move? So I had I had a homeboy, um, one of my Haitian people. He got a degree in Orlando in respiratory therapy. He was working in Orlando. Orlando got a lot of health care, big health care footprint in Orlando. They weren't paying him what he felt like he should be making. So he and his wife moved to uh, Cali. Now, Cali got higher bills. But again, they working together, right? They come from a, a, a traditional Haitian family, so they working together. Him, him, both him and his wife Haitians. They working together. He was a respiratory therapist. She was a nurse prac, so you know she getting paper. They living in California, so they weigh way more money in California, even though the cost of living was high because Orlando just not gonna pay you. Almost a third of Orlando service. They make money off tips, or they don't make a lot of money because they work like in restaurants with no tips. So they're able to compress wages in Orlando like that. Orlando does not have industry. We don't. We don't have industry like other cities have, like Atlanta. We don't have a port like Miami. What makes us big is tourism, right? Sports and tourism and a little bit of music. So those are environments where there is no standard pay. Tourism really is whatever. Sports is no standard pay. Ain't no, you know, you just pay whatever you make. You make whatever you get out of, the, out of that particular situation. And uh, music, you make what you make. So it's not good for like a baseline of pay like you see in other parts of the country. So I would really ask myself, if I was in your situation, fourth dimension, where am I willing to move to to make more money? And does that work for me and what I'm trying to do? Right? Because there's some place I won't move to. But where am I willing to move to to get more paper? And then if that works, then I'm going to go there. You know, and I would tell you, and I would encourage you, I don't know your age, to make that decision as fast as possible because you can waste a lot of years in a city trying to make a city work for you that's not going to work for you. You know, some cities just not going to work. What's up, Mr. Hans from Naptown? What's up, Dr. Chaz? What's going on with you, Dr. Chaz? What's up, Ant Dog? So I think you out there in that Stafford area, how you like it? So Mr. Uh, Joseph... Clearwater St. Pete in the house. Big up to Clearwater St. Pete. Clearwater, real, real nice area. Beautiful beaches. Beautiful beaches in Clearwater. What I didn't like about Clearwater, Mr. Joseph, is just there's a bunch of retirees out there. Right? But it's a beautiful area. Right? Can't take none from it. GC, what's going on with it? So Miss Katrina says... Close to beaches, nature parks, means residents to keep an environment area city. Yeah, definitely. There's a wetlands area on the west side that I used to walk during the pandemic when they told everybody they couldn't go into the gyms. Beautiful, beautiful area. Orlando has so many nature things that you can deal with if you like that type of stuff. And I love that type of stuff, especially towards the end of the year. We stay ready to go into the where it get dark real late. You can work all day and then hit the parks and just get your exercise in and be around nature and breathe that fresh air. You know, that's real important to me. HOA is big in Texas VA plan can be definitely. Um, when I was living in Stafford, Sugar Land, you see those managed communities. 
They build an area, put the big fence around it. They got their own community center, their own pool, yada, yada, yada. I don't like living like that. Because where I was from, we used to be everywhere. We was we was all over the city. That's how I came up. Even on the bus, we was all over the city. But everybody raised different. I don't like being boxed in. So we got somebody. Let me bring Miss Tam in. <laughs> Let me tell you, how you doing? I'm also, hold on. You know what? Let me, I got the background going. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. You're not on camera anyway. Yeah, but the background is still going. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Do what you got to do. So let me put, um, let me get rid of this real quick while waiting on Miss Tam. Let me go to the comments. Definitely people sleep on GDP. They don't have to often ask themselves, how much money does that city actually bring in? So Miss Alexander says, my business has been ran in six or seven different cities. So, Miss Tam, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, what's going on? Uh, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm awesome. I hear you talking about my city, so, you know, I had to come up. I feel you. <laughs> no, so some of the places, like, uh, in, in reference to around the city, have always been actually predominantly white. Okay. Um, places like anything, I'll say Ponce. Firm Bank Science Center area, all the way down to where Channel um, Five going back up towards La Vista Road. Okay. Up that way, if you take that, if you take Moreland and Moreland crosses over Ponce and then turns over, going all the way back up there, um, they've always been white. Midtown always white. So some things are, I don't necessarily want to call it gentrification. I just want to say some some of the areas in Atlanta have always been predominantly white, but got their, the income needed to it be in those areas has increased. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So when mm -hmm. you say, so I know that Moreland going up to Ponce area by five points, right? So what about that area? So you know where Moreland intersects with Ponce with South. So South going down to 20. So so I grew up in the area, East okay. Atlanta. Yes, ma'am. So little five points, Emmon Park area, that's always right up there. If you went to Little Five Points and you went, uh, if you got up to Little Five Points, it used to be the Zestos right there. And you make that, if you're coming from um, Ponce, you make a right. That's Emmon Park. All of that uh, area back up in there has always been white since okay. I can remember. And okay. I grew up in that area. So I used to hang out in Little Five Points um, in that area. So back in the day, it used to be um, skinheads in their area. It, they used to have um, the weed festival where they were in the park. They would just smoke weed in the park mm -hmm. before, way before everybody was talking about smoking weed outside and all of that. Um, it used to be uh, Bass High School was there um, and they turned those into lofts. And then um, if you keep going, it was some public housing there. Uh, it used to be Atlanta Gas and Light had all those acres where that Best Buy is at. Okay. It used to be Atlanta Gas and Light. And Atlanta Gas and Light owned that 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 whole city plot, that whole city block from, from one light all the way up to the next light. Um, and then back in the cut, there, there will be uh it was a mix of black people. And white people in that area, but predominantly black. But it was still some white people in there because that's just what it was. And then that area has so slowly changed. Now, if you take that area and you go all the way up to well, Moreland and Memorial Cross, yeah, I really that's like where the where you start meet Atlanta, the Cab County. Like okay. that's my that's my that's my that's my um. That's my point of reference. I'm like, on one side, I'm I'm in Decatur. On another side, I'm in Atlanta. Yeah. Right? And so uh, if you keep going up that way, there used to be um, the DMV was up there. Now, mostly all of that has always been a mix, but primarily black. Okay. And that, then that, and you could take the streetway from there and go to Decatur. Now, when people say they're from Decatur, you have to, for me, I always clarify it. Are you from Decatur or are you from the city of Decatur? 
Because if you were from the city of Decatur, that was different than being from Decatur. Yeah. Because the city of Decatur is, is predominantly always been like really white, if you really want to look at it away, but a little yeah. mix of black people here yeah. and there. Because again, over in that area, it's Agnes Scott. So Agnes Scott, uh, where most of the diplomats send their kids, they own a lot of that land over there. Yeah. And so they're gonna always keep that property up. That's never gonna go away. That's they're never gonna, that's never gonna turn. They own they own they they own too much over there. And so when you even when you come out of there and then you go over to Avondale Estates, Avondale Estates has always been white. So now you're coming into Columbia Drive, Memorial Drive. Now now you now you're in Decatur. Now that's that's usually predominantly black. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Why have you or have you not chosen to stay uh, in the actual city of Atlanta? So have you chosen to stay there? And if you haven't, why haven't you? you know, my family has never really chosen. I, let me say that. Let me let me clarify that. My no. family, when I say my family, my mom never chose the city of Atlanta because she didn't like um, the politics of the city of Atlanta. Okay. And she didn't like the schools for me at that time. Yeah, I understand. So at that time, the city of Atlanta had the worst in terms of schools, in terms of education, and DeKalb County was 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 better at that time. Okay. And also at that time, growing up in DeKalb County, the schools were um, also uh, top rated as well too. So they so a lot of the schools were you competed. Um, nationally with other schools and so and so for the education as well too and then too in DeKalb County this is a long time ago too um, it was where where you had black neighborhoods they were safe uh, people were working uh, people you know had, had pride in the in the property the property value was good so forth and so on so that was that's that's pre-90s that's like 80s, early, well, probably early 92, 93, 94, like that. Probably right, in, right around in there. Okay, so what but happened this, to change those neighborhoods? So I can tell you. So uh, one of the big things in that happened with um, on the on the I don't, I don't want to say the west side. I just say uh, coming out of the Cab County was. After I left, I got I graduated in '93. So after I left and started looking around the city, people started moving uh, out of the out of the areas because they won. Either they didn't want the commutes anymore, because you got to remember most most places, especially if you wanted to work, you you had to go to work either in the city of Atlanta or you had to work out in Dunwoody. Or okay. and then it was it was no Alpharetta like yeah. Alpharetta didn't exist, right? So Dunwoody Perimeter Mall area was was huge, and then Alpharetta became a thing. Really, Georgia four hundred became a thing, and then okay. Alpharetta. Okay. So people didn't didn't want to commute anymore. So a lot of people start moving to places where they commute. Now here's the other flip side of all of this too. Um, back then. You had jobs working at the plant, so General Motors, okay. working at Ford. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of people worked at General Motors in 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 Hapeville and Ford as well, and they would just make the commute. Um, and and so you had a lot of factory work then. Cisco was a big was a big thing. A lot of factory work was in Atlanta too at that time. Yeah. So yeah, a amazing. lot of that had to do with job placement like how how far i gotta commute what what's gonna be central for me and my family um and and school wise and then back then to top that off we had what we call um minority to majority yeah I which was basically m to m where you would bus black students to white schools yeah okay so where do you see the um <clears throat> This, Cause let me ask you a question. So I know you may you may know this, you may not know this, because it might have happened even before you was around. So somebody mm -hmm. told me that lived in a city at one time, the Cab County was white, and then asked, mm -hmm. 
they desegregated and black people started to move and all the white people went to the north side. Is that That's true? true? Okay. Yeah. So um, at one point, DeKalb County, so this is old, old tale, and you can look this up. They used to hang um, black people off of, off of the mountain in Stone Mountain. So that yeah, was yeah. one of the things growing up. My grandma used to say, make sure you don't get caught in Stone Mountain and make sure you don't get caught in Pale Metal because they, they you know, they would, you know, it was a lynching session. And okay. so they used to have KKK rallies at in Stone Mountain. Yeah, yeah. And so as 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 time has gone on, black people have started to gain more access to better jobs and moved into those neighborhoods and moved into those neighborhoods. And now you can't even like everybody I talk to that's from my island or from Jamaica or something like that, they live in Stone Mountain. That's their go to. Okay. Right? Well, back in the day, you 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 know, back probably about in the 80s, you couldn't get in Stone Mountain. But in the 90s, you could get in Stone Mountain. It was plenty of black people in Stone Mountain by that time. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm for me. I knew uh, an attorney that lives out in Stone Mountain. Uh, and I did mm -hmm. look at I did look at some real estate there. It's just it's interesting because like, and I know people that stay here. Um mm -hmm. you see if you're looking at the metro area, you're seeing a lot of the money is north of the city, Dunwoody, Sandy Springs, the Roswell area. Now it's starting to be. Yes, yeah. ma'am. But the question is, was it always like that? So th that money came from somewhere. So did they initially live in Atlanta at one time and they decided to move up there because they didn't want to live around black people? Or was it always there and the white people? Because So let me give you an example. I'm from Orlando. Mm -hmm. I've lived in Tampa. I've also spent time in Jacksonville. I've also spent time in Miami. One thing you mm -hmm. see in the South is you see working class white people. When mm -hmm. I moved to Atlanta, one thing that stood out to me is I didn't see a lot of working class white people in the city. I saw white people right. that had a whole lot of money. So black people that had a whole lot of money. And I saw black people that was dirt poor. Well, I didn't I see never, working class I, white folks. I, I, I can say this. I never seen working class white people in the city growing up. So where they move, where they where they at then? I never saw that growing up. Like if if I went to if I did see them, they worked at the bank, but downtown Atlanta was never like a working class for white people. I never saw that growing up. So let me ask you a question. So I, let me so, I don't remember, I remember seeing it. So where do you think they're at? Because I know they were in like Union City. Did so did the working class white people decide they just don't want to have nothing to do with the city of Atlanta and move way, way, way out to the outlying suburbs? Yeah, Alpharetta. Okay. Um Covington has always been white. Okay. And um Conyers was always white. You yeah, couldn't yeah. get you couldn't find black people out in Conyers. You can find black people out in, 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 in Covington. But what happened is the people that live, the black people that live in, in Decatur that are from Atlanta have moved to Conyers. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're locked on your Conyers. That's what that is. Okay. Um, Covington is has always been too far out from the city. So nobody, I, I, nobody's commuting. There was no jobs out there. Nobody's going to commute from Covington to go to Dunwoody. That's crazy. I feel you. <laughs> that's crazy so but Dunwoody has always been white even in high school for me that was always a white school uh up there by uh uh keep going up la vista going up that that's it's always been white white people have always lived in Dunwoody perimeter mall um out in that area even i lived in cobb county um windy hill um, yeah, I know in the nineties, it was was white, but then you get to a certain part, you know, of of Kyle County, and it turns predominantly black. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of Mexicans out here now. So you take Windy Hill, uh, Windy Hill around the highway, it's still mm -hmm. relatively white. You start going west, the farther west you get, the more Mexicans you're gonna start running into on Windy Hill. Yep. So I used to live up by the Big Chicken. Okay, I know what that's at. <laughs> I don't know what that's at. Yeah. I used to live about a bit. This back, this back in the day, I'm, I'm dating myself. This when Cub Foods was still open, <laughs> it was still a chain. Uh, but Cub Foods was open, and even up up in that area because there's a sister school up there uh, for Georgia Tech. I think they sold it, but it used to be Southern Poly Ethnic Tech, um, okay. and that used to be the sister school to Georgia Tech. And so that sister school of Georgia Tech has um, has was was predominantly white. It was. The area was predominantly white, but now when you go up in that area for Marietta and so forth, that's predominantly black. And then if you keep going out to um, Cartersville, 
Uh, if you go keep going, keep going up 75 and 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 uh, I forget what's the city. What's the what's the one at the car? What's the one before Cartersville? It's Ackworth. Um, yeah, Ackworth. So yes, Ackworth, Ackworth. Ken Kennesaw State. So I lived out there too. So Kennesaw State, um, before it became a university, it was just a parking lot. And it had uh, it had some some how some uh, uh, student housing, and then they had like you would go to you would go up there, and it would just be a parking lot and nothing. And then eventually you start seeing more and more building, more and more stuff. And it it, it wasn't you didn't you didn't find black people out in in Kennesaw like that. Now when you go look up, and I find this funny, when you go look up. Uh, the metro Atlanta area, they include Kennesaw. And I'm like, why? You know how far that is from the city? And everybody's like, no, it's about 20 minutes from the city. I'm like, no, it's not. It's more than that. But okay, I'm going to let y'all live. But now it's, it's part of the metro area. So it's, it's, yeah, it's I mean, interesting if, 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 to see how yeah, I mean, far I, it depends. Yeah, I mean, if Alpha Red are part of metro, yeah, Kennesaw, if, if the how, if the traffic's not that bad on 75, it's about 20 minutes. I mean, because I used to, I used to, I used to know somebody in Ackworth. So I used to drive from, from used to take Windy Hill to 75 and go north to get to Ackworth. If it's not mm -hmm. a lot of traffic, it's about a 30 minute drive. So Kennesaw about a 20 minute drive, not a lot of traffic. So it is a metro because if 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 they're calling Alpharetta and they're calling Roswell the metro, then Kennesaw gotta be in the metro too. Yeah, I, I never looked at Kennesaw as the metro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you from the you from the city, so that's that's one of the <laughs> things. So it's just that I think that um the sprawl is because of people trying to, like you said, find, trying to find better opportunities. But I don't think they're going to exist in the future because mm -hmm. of the real estate. The issue, one of the challenges I see in Atlanta with the real estate is that it doesn't matter even if you go out, out, out almost to Cartersville, the real estate really don't get mm -hmm. cheaper. No. Nope. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's one of the issues. It's just not getting cheaper, even as you move farther yeah, up. And, and then, too, uh, I just did my live about, about this. Well, I did my live a couple of weeks ago, but I talked about it again. Uh, so in Conyers, you know, they designated Conyers as a tech, uh, they're building a new technology park out there. So okay. they're building uh, data centers out there for, they're building AI data centers out there. And then Amazon just bought 430 acres in Covington. Okay. So everybody that's in Conyers and in Covington, their property value has shot up tremendously in the past year. Okay. Right. So now you're going to start seeing more and more. You're going to start seeing more and more white people come back to Congress. Okay. And come and come and 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 they're already out in Covington, but they're 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 gonna they're gonna stay where they're at. But the, well, why I say that is because more jobs are gonna come into the into those areas. You you know when you got a data center, people want to be as close to those data centers as possible especially when they're dealing with AI and stuff. So I expect more finance companies will be in that area. I, I'm expecting more and more technology companies coming into that area um, and rebuilding. I mean, we already, you know, we got that, you know, that the CHIPS Act and so forth. So that money is being sprawled and spread out throughout that city, just like with Augusta being deemed as a cybersecurity uh, city. And it's, it's actually the, the model, um, they're putting billions into Augusta. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, coming, and I know Augusta's getting a, I think a, the airport is expanding as well too. So I, I wouldn't be surprised at some point, I know everybody was talking about Atlanta and Hartsville Airport. I wouldn't be surprised if another airport pops up in between Augusta and um, in, in the city of Atlanta for, for, for the size and for the commute. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, Kanye's got a nice area. They need to work on their healthcare footprint. Yep. That's one of my biggest challenges. They don't, it's, you know, I see that a lot of the, the rural areas of Atlanta, really it's an Atlanta issue, uh, South mm -hmm. Side, is that mm -hmm. the healthcare footprint, especially for public health, is not that good. Mm -hmm. And me coming out of healthcare, I know exactly what to look for. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest issues. So if they yeah. can get that solved, I wouldn't mind buying a house out there. But yeah, they got to get that healthcare footprint a lot better. So they, that will happen once the money comes out there because they're going to demand it. Yes, the, I mean, and that's and that's what I'm saying. Amazon 
it's going to demand that for its employees. Yeah. They're going to have they're going to have to have that, right? They're not going to have 430 acres and be paying people anywhere from what 80 to 150,000 depending on what comes in that area, how they how they connect with companies. They're not going to they're going to allow people to go all the way to to uh Dunwoody to go get a good doctor or to Northside exactly. Drive or something like that to go to a doctor. That's not going to happen. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anything else you want to say before I let you go? Nah, that was okay. it. I just want to give you that, that, that little side of history. That's okay. It. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you too. Talk later. All right. Bye. Okay. So big up to Miss Katrina. Um, Let me pull this up real quick with the hundred dollar super chat. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to get up on out of here, man. So I appreciate everybody for coming through. Be safe. I think the uh the champ is the championship tomorrow. I think the championship tomorrow for the women. I think the men's is on Monday. So I'm gonna check those out. Y'all be easy, man. Talk to you later.